Whether it's drinking or washing your hands or taking care of your flowers, think about how many times you use water every day. Most of us know we shouldn't waste it, but it could be a lot sooner than you think before you can't simply turn on your faucet and get it. A state report under development lays out the timeline and why supplies are in danger of drying up. The day you can't fill your glass, bask under a long shower, or water the lawn at will may not be too far in the distant future. It's potentially within our lifetimes. At best, if we do nothing in the next 50 to 60 years, we won't have sufficient supplies to meet the demands. Susan Metzger is chief of planning and policy for the Kansas Water Office and leading the way in developing a 50-year vision plan for the future of water in Kansas. I don't know that a wholesale review of what we do is actually necessary. I think what's necessary is making sure that we target resources and cost share programs to the right places where it can really have a significant impact. The first draft of the plan released this summer traces the major issues facing Northeast Kansas here to the state's reservoirs like Lake Perry. Among their functions is to store water for use in times of drought. But since it opened in 1966, as happens in nature, the streams and rivers that feed the lake have carried the sediment from stream banks along the water, and it is clearly adding up. This one has lost about 18% of its capacity to sedimentation since construction. So that means in the past 50 years, about 18% of the storage now is dirt instead of water supply. You can see it in the logs jutting from above the surface, the large island north of the K-92 bridge at Ozonkee. This is an aerial view of Lake Perry in 1974. This is 2001. The red areas? As early as 15 years ago, they were open water. The problem surfaces even more at Tuttle Creek Reservoir. All the grass and trees you see north of the Randolph Bridge, that all used to be water. Surveys show this lake is 40% silted in. This all used to be lake all the way Ryan up. Ryan McNulty has watched the lake shrink, first growing up in the area and now as the Army Corps of Engineers manager at Tuttle Creek. This was Tuttle in 1957. Look at the dramatic difference by 2010. We've lost almost 5,000 surface acres of water in this lake alone. As time goes on, water supply demands generally go up, but the volume of the lake is actually going down because of the sedimentation. So uh, that's math that doesn't really that's add math up. that doesn't add up. Correct, especially for communities downstream. It's definitely reason to be concerned, like the city of Topeka, who rely on that storage. If we didn't have it during uh, drought periods such as uh, 2012, uh, there could be water restrictions. It doesn't just threaten water supply. It's a happy place to be. Tyla Rummold and her husband Alan manage Rock Creek Marina on Lake Perry. We make our living by the lake. Their workplace is literally getting smaller. Already some boat ramps have closed and parts of the lake are accessed at your own risk. In 2010, the Corps estimated Kansas reservoirs pumped more than $202 million into the Kansas economy, nearly $35 million of that from Perry and Tuttle alone. People like this, they buy this, they spend a lot of money to be here. If we didn't have the lake, they'd travel farther to find another lake. The Water Vision Plan acknowledges the recreation interests as it wades into finding solutions. The problems were foreseen. When built, engineers estimated the reservoirs had a 50 to 100 year lifespan. It's a time that has come, but a prediction, experts say, that does not have to come to fruition. Accepting a 50-year lifespan is not an option. We really don't have the luxury of waiting another day. So what can be done? We will take a look at the tall task ahead and work already underway when you join us tomorrow on 13 News at 6. A lot of extended coverage can be found now at WIBW.com. Ensuring that we'll all have the water we need when we need it is the goal of the state's water vision plan, which is under development. We showed you last night on our News at 10 how dirt filling up the reservoirs threatens to limit our water supply within the next few decades. Tonight, what's already being done to slow it down, but at a price tag that could impact all of us. This is my fishing spot. David Royer loves the land. You want to go swim? And the water that runs through it. Good boy. The retired teacher farms 740 acres in rural Atchison County, bordered by the Delaware River. Over my lifetime, it's been amazing the changes that I've seen mm. down here. Changes slowly eating away his property. Down at a courthouse, they actually took some acres off because there's not as many acres what there used to be. How much were you losing? three to seven feet a year on average. It's a lot of tons of soil 
that ends up in Perry Lake. Keeping the water clear of the soil is a tall task with water supply, water quality, recreation dollars and more all dependent on keeping soil from draining the space for water. Landowners like Royer are being targeted as a first line of defense. I wasn't planning on going to the meeting. I was talked into going. A friend convinced Royer to find out about the Watershed Restoration and Protection Strategies Project, or RAPS. He admits he was skeptical of partnering with the government. I kind of like to do my own thing. Still, he signed up. Using grants, Royer paid 5% of the cost to shore up three riverbank sites along his property. Crews dug in to change the slope of the bank, added rock and vegetation. I'm sure that the insects... They even started thousands of trees. It will really grow fast in here. And other plantings. It will reseed itself, so there will always be good vegetation here. So. In a buffer area extending from the bank. There won't be more erosion in here. <laughs> The Kansas Water Office identified 171 stream bank erosion sites like these above Perry and 403 above Tuttle Creek, the two reservoirs seeing the greatest sedimentation issues. The costs to stabilize just these are estimated at more than $33 million. It is not a cheap fix, but we know it has a lot of bang for our buck. Although it's an expensive practice, they really work. Slowing sedimentation is just one area of focus in the Kansas Water 50-year vision plan currently under development. It also suggests best practices for conservation and irrigation and more expensive alternatives like building new reservoirs or dredging, a task that involves more than just simply digging out the material. Consider, for example, Tuttle Creek, where 40 percent of the lake is silted in. You'd have to find a place for seven and a half square miles of material on average 10 to 15 feet deep to put somewhere. No matter the option, cost will be an issue. Metzger said Federal Recovery Act money allowed for completion of 20 to 30 RAPS projects a year for a few years. That has slowed to a trickle. Now, money from EPA grants through KDHE, state matches, and landowner investment is only enough for two to three. The price tag means that over time, more people than the customers that are paying now would likely end up paying to really put in the solutions necessary. Royer paid just shy of $10,000 for his projects, plus he lost some farming land to the slope change and buffer area. But seeing the final result, he's convinced it's a good investment. And the way it was going, I was going to continue to lose it, and you had nothing. This way, I lost some, but I have a stable river and I'm not going to lose any more. The state is planning a dredging project next year at John Redmond Reservoir in Coffee County. They are currently looking to secure about 500 acres for hauling what they expect to dig out. We'll be taking a look at some of the issues we uncovered for the city of Topeka, including one that recently made headlines for putting toxins in the water supply for Toledo, Ohio. That is coming up tonight on 13 News at 10 o'clock. The same toxic algae that's sparking warnings at Kansas Lakes and recently had shut down the water supply for Toledo, Ohio, is showing up in the source of water for several cities, including Topeka. The microtoxins produced by blue-green algae are turning up in the Kansas River. It is a byproduct of some of the issues and problems we've been telling you about raised in the first draft of the Kansas Water Vision Plan. And it's one local officials are already working to get ahead of to keep our water safe. At every step of the treatment process, I splash a little bit. City of Topeka right. chemist Mary Von Ar is doing special tests on the water. This is going to be the exit of the secondary poly. She's working to ensure that what recently turned up in the Kansas River has no chance of making it to your faucet at home. What we're seeing uh, occasionally is some of that algal toxins being transported, but they come at very low levels by the time they hit us. Utilities Superintendent Don Rankin says the toxins are from blue-green algae blooms likely in Milford Lake, which in recent years has seen an increased number of blooms sparking warnings against direct contact with the water. Water from Milford enters the Kansas River. This month, the city of Topeka joined other utilities downstream, including Lawrence and Olathe, to ensure current treatments are enough to keep those microtoxins out of the water supply. We are looking to be uh, proactive. We're collecting the samples. Uh, all through our treatment process to uh, look at the effectiveness of our treatment process and how do we optimize it, how do we make it the most effective for that in case that situation comes up again. They're doing the test now to make sure it doesn't come to this. Thanks a lot, guys. I 
A massive blue-green algae bloom in Lake Erie recently tainted the city of Toledo, Ohio's water supply. Water quality is part of the Kansas Water Vision Plan being developed by the state. The same sediment reducing the reservoir's capacity is also loading the water with phosphorus and nitrogen. It comes from sewage and the runoff from agriculture and lawns. Those key ingredients help blue-green algae thrive, especially in warm weather and warmer, stiller waters, which seems to make Milford particularly susceptible. The Kansas Farm Bureau points out the current levels are the result of five decades of accumulation, but says efforts to improve and reduce farm sediment are always a focus. The good news is right now Topeka and other utilities report no toxins getting through any level of treatment, but the EPA is looking at them as an emerging contaminant in case the algae blooms continue to worsen. Although we have the modern technology in place, we want that added assurance that the water that we're delivering to customers really is clean. While city officials are confident the water they're getting out of the river is safe, they're not so confident about how it gets to your home. The draft of the Water Vision Report says the state will need to invest $4 billion in infrastructure over the next 20 years. It's a cost you'll likely be asked to pay. What we don't want is we don't want the break to occur in the first place. When we know the pipe has gotten old, we want to be proactive and, and replace that. Rankin says to replace and stay ahead of aging infrastructure, Topeka would need to spend $6 million a year to get all 850 miles of its water mains replaced every 100 years. But it's up to citizens to make the investment. What level of outages are you willing to uh, tolerate? Rankin says questions on infrastructure, quality, and supply are large, and everyone has a stake in the answers. It's not a uh, 100 years from now. It's soon. And the city of Topeka, in fact, is holding some town hall meetings. They are set for next Monday and Tuesday to outline a plan for needed improvements and how it could impact what you pay. We have the hours of that on WIBW.com. There's also a lot of extended coverage on WIBW.com, including all of our stories, links to the Water Vision Plan, and information on the very different issues facing western Kansas, which gets its water from the Ogallala Aquifer. Ralph. Melissa, thank you for that.